Okay, I didn't study human resources per se um, because at the time I was going into school, a few institutions offered that course. So I got in to study mass communication. Naturally, I'm a lover of people. I love people. Ah, I love people. I love structure. I love organization. I love setting things in place. I love people knowing what they're supposed to do and so on and so forth. So with all that I took from my lecturers, added to my personality, I just felt HR is it for me. And that was how I got into it. When I finished service, I got into an insurance company to serve. And I actually begged them to give me HR. But the DGM said, no, I want you to go to life. Life is a department in that organization. And I was like, okay, um, I'll go through it. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go to life. Again, what I understand about life is there are some experiences that you go through that they may not be relatable to where you want to be in life, but they are contributory to the whole you, the whole you at the end of the day. So I didn't get HR, I didn't get to serve in HR. I serve in the life department. Did that help me? Yes, it, it really helped me. Because there are a lot of um, letters, correspondence that comes in into, that come into the life department and I have to reply them. We, we write with our hands, really, with our hands. So I will write the letters, the response to the letters. I will pile them up, attach it to the files of each customer. I will put the letters they have written to us, my own response. I will attach, I can, I can attach like 10, I can do like 10 files, 10 customers. And I send it to my, my GM and he keeps correcting it. At some point, he stopped, he said, you are now a guru. Because customers are then sending in commendations. That who, who, who is this? Who is this person? Who, who, who wrote this letter? This is so, you know, explanatory. And what I did was I went further to ask questions about those places. After my service, they retained me for another nine months. Just in that company, I got married. And then I got into an NGO to work as um, the office administrator, the HR administrator. But do not forget, at that time, I didn't have so much of experience. So I do, there's one beautiful gift the Lord God has given to humanity that I use very well, and that is WWW, World Wide Web. So anything anybody says to me, I just pick one word, whatever you've said, put it into the browser, and a lot of articles, a lot of things on that subject comes up. So I read, I read, I talk to people, I attend CIPM, you know, induction and training. And so I'm able to sit down to say, okay, with what I've learned, what I've read, what people have said to me, and I'll sit down, I put something together that reflect the organization. At that time, it wasn't perfect. I was just doing what I think I know how to do. My boss was happy that, wow, we brought a lot of sanity into this place. There's a lot of organization now. People know what they're supposed to do. We know that we're supposed to pay salary at so-so-so uh, day in the month. And, and all of that went. I was in the organization for like six years. I undertook a lot of projects. In fact, project that the cost runs into millions. And they will say, just hand it over to Moji, she will fix it. If they call me Mrs. 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 Fix It. They will, they will know I will fix it. Because I negotiate with, with, with vendors, with contractors, I tell them no. And so, at some point, as I started learning from our, um, our engineers, and they said to me, no, when you, want to, when you want to negotiate costs with contractors, do you know what you do? All their points, tell them to break it down into phases, and you start picking it one by one. Don't just negotiate and say, Give me 10%. So you, the person would have cheated you anyways. Pick the component one by one on the foundation. Tell them to break it down. And so and that was how, that was how I learned how to negotiate contractors, building, having a construction and things like that. Okay, so 30 days is so small. I wouldn't say that I achieved anything in 30 days other than trying to understand what that environment is all about. Why am I here? What am I here to do? 
don't forget i just um delivered um had my baby then when i got into that job so it is asking questions why am i here what do they want me to achieve asking my boss questions to say what exactly do you want to achieve what is the reason for this role what do you want me to do and the reason i ask those questions is so that i don't get lost because it's very easy when you don't know the objective of your role you just get get swamped up doing other things why that particular role is just you know just missing out of the whole thing so it's just trying to understand that environment how does my role fit into that environment how does it fit into the big picture of the organization how am i able to support my boss that is happy with me is able to leave a lot of things so it's is rather least you know understanding the environment studying who my boss is and how i can support him and gaining trust so if you ask that um in six months what it was wow then i'll be able to tell you it was massive because i got baptized into that work i come in very early before my boss is there before every other person arrives and that is still the way i do the way i work right now i'm the first to get into my organization i'm sometimes the last to leave because I believe that early in the morning, I'm able to achieve more before people start coming into HR office to ask questions and things like that. So six months, I was able to put in a lot of policies, you know, set up structures, reporting structures, who report to who. If you are coming, you just don't go into the boss's office. You speak to the, secre to the, to the security person who calls the secretary. And you know, things are just put structures in place and so on and so forth. Ha. No profession is easy because there are different competencies and behavior that is needed for different profession. So if you say HR, it's about people, it's about the business, it's about structure, you know, and you come and you say HR, HR is not easy really. So some of the challenges I've had in HR, I'm just going to limit it to a few, but basically it's more about leadership so leading people is not easy um you can see ahead of these people you can see that they can do these things but they can't say it they don't even believe in themselves but you are saying to them do you know what you can do it and they're saying but i can't but i don't have what it takes and i'm saying to them what it takes is built along the way as you learn as you develop the experiences are not same because the jobs that I take, I take higher roles than what I left, meaning that between what I left and what I'm going into, there is a gap. And I must learn that gap as fast as possible. And one of the challenges and a major shock for me is understanding the culture of that environment. There is a way to behave, there is how to behave. And it's not same from one organization to the other, it's not. So I've succeeded in other organizations. There are different components and different apportionment. But you see, you are going into a new role and you're asking yourself, what is this organization all about? What are the requirements? what are the success indicators in this organization if you do not understand the mix of the success indicators you will be frustrated you will not have resignation and leave okay in the hr space you see one thing i've not seen so much i've seen a lot of um, mentoring activities and a lot of coaching um, initiatives but what I haven't seen much is a leadership academy in Nigeria. And I'm not talking about leadership academy for everybody. I mean, for HR people, for HR professionals. How can we build HR professionals in such a way that they can lead businesses? That we can, we can without, without um, struggle. Okay, look at a finance person. Look at someone who study marketing. You know that those ones, their career path is along the path of becoming COO, CEO, because they study, they have um, business um, courses, they study business. But as an HR person, how do you see HR running businesses? 
And to do that is running a leadership academy where HR is taught how to run business. Yes, you now understand people. You understand how to use people to achieve results. How do you run business? How do you understand the numbers? Like I was, I was, we were talking before we came on, 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 the, on, on, the, on the screen. And I was saying to you that for each other person, you want them to understand what are your cost element and what are those things that gives you revenue. You must understand your business. Staff cost is called sunk cost. Whether business makes money or not, whether business makes profit or not, you must pay salaries and all the associated costs. So how then do you use these people to ensure that they achieve business goals? That is leadership. That's the business leadership. You must have to learn all of that. How business grows, how you enable business, what are the content and the, um, the component of your cost and your revenue? Are you able to balance it? How do you manage your cost? How do you grow your revenue? In such a way that when HR sits, they are talking numbers. They are not just talking uh, hire, fire. Right now, a lot of people still believe that HR is about hiring and firing. No! You need to understand the numbers. You must be able to say, of the range of our services, this one gives us more, and so we're dedicating more here. So you must be able to look at and say, okay, now we want to release this. Competition, what is competition doing? Competition analysis. You're looking at competition analysis, you're looking at what you are doing and saying, how soon must I release mine before competition catches up with me? Now, if competition catches up with me, what do I need to do? Business leadership. HR needs to understand that. Until we understand that, HR isn't going to get any space to grow business. That I haven't seen. I wish I could see that. I wish I could see a leadership academy where I, could, I can get into to enroll and just learn how to run business. So learning about earning. They shouldn't bother about the earning, the quick earnings. They will, they will, get, they will gain it. They will gain if you can be patient enough to learn. The phone will find you. It will. But again, when you don't have content, you don't have depth, and you go out there, adversity will test. Yes, adversity will test what you have. And the question you need to ask yourself is, when adversity comes to test what I have, will I survive? Okay, so let me just say, whether you are married or not, I think for to be a thriving, a thriving HR woman or man, your mindset. Because again, our mindset plays a lot of games on us. See, within the realms of your mind, there is no limitation. When it is in reality, you start setting boundaries and say, I can't achieve this, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. But within the realms of your mind and your dreams, there are no limitations. So I believe I can do everything and I can achieve whatever I want to achieve when I put my mind to it. Having a good man and having children who believe so much in you, my children believe. And that's why a lot of times I don't like giving up. Because what do I tell them? that made me give up. How do I say it? That I gave up on something. No, it's okay to be tired and you can always slow down, regain your strength and launch back. But giving up is criminal. It's unforgivable. You can't give up. You can be tired. Make your rest, but you can't give up. So I have these two wonderful girls who believe mommy can be anything. And mommy has said you can be anything. So they believe so much in it. They believe so much in it. And I keep raising the bar, telling them you can you, you can stand where men stand and tell them whatever they say, you can say it. Whatever they, they are chopping, you can chop it. You can stand there and tell them whatever you can achieve. Hello, look at this girl. I can achieve it. 